recently I found myself having a crisis, but this crisis has absolutely nothing to do with my identity. It's more so within just the quality of well-being internally and trying to force better habits. I've been really focusing on being cautious with what I stimulate my mind with, fasting every morning up until 12, being vulnerable and breaking free from trauma, going to the gym and just being very consistent with yourself because you owe it to yourself to feel and look even better than you could only imagine. For about a week, I have contemplated uploading this video just because I felt like it was very vulnerable to myself. I do feel like it is now time because I know that I'm not the only young woman that is currently going through this and is feeling just like she's going through the motions. I hope that this reaches and touches the right person and you take bits and pieces that you resonate with and decide to just listen to the rest. If you're a fan of poppy, the raspberry flavor, they both taste fairly similar. Since this is kombucha, it has more of an apple cider vinegar aftertaste. If you drink kombucha, you already know I don't have to go too far into depth about it. I felt very called. Um, recently, I've been discovering a lot of things and some of my pers perspectives have changed. And so I feel very called to be here today. Hopefully you enjoy, take some things from this video if you resonate, but if you don't, that's perfectly fine. For quite some time now, I've been doing a lot of casual dating. I started to face myself and and by face myself, I mean attack my trauma head on, head first, instead of, of being avoidant about it. Whether we recognize it or not, um, there are just some things that we pick up from our parents. Whether it's healthy or unhealthy, um, we pick up these things because we've grown up in a household with them for so long. And you don't realize how they affect your friendships and relationships until you like start to get older. I started to realize that a few of the things that I picked up that were not healthy were really affecting just my day-to-day -day life. And it's just, it's not fair to me. And one of those things that I did, I'm literally talking so much, I'm not even doing my makeup. Oh, I'm sorry, y'all. I'm just... One of those areas, I felt like I wasn't heard in some aspects. Like, I wasn't an adult. And I know just because you're not an adult doesn't mean that your feelings are invalid. But I think we all should be very honest and very transparent. Because when it comes to a lot of us growing up in black households, typically your feelings aren't heard because you don't pay bills, you know? <laughs> like, and it's not funny, but that's so crazy because I know some of you guys can also relate because I know so, I've spoken to some of my friends and they agree. Like, the way you feel kind of does not matter. And maybe it does matter, but, you know, your parents are just going through so much, you know, like they... Like, it's just so many things, and I see it from both perspectives, but not being heard caused quite a lot of trauma responses. And to give you some examples, I mean, like, when I am upset, I don't express that, you know? Like, I'll kind of just sweep my feelings under the rug and then just move forward as if nothing ever happened. But it's always gonna be in the back of my mind. By me internalizing these feelings, it would literally just pile up and pile up and pile up and it's like I would keep note of so many things and by the time it's time for us to actually get into something whether it was something so small I'm addressing four or five, five different things that have triggered me and I'm like so upset and I'm so mad and I'm so hurt and it's just like a rush of emotion but it's so big you know and it's like yes I am expressing those emotions but it built a lot of tension when it didn't even have to get to that, you know? On top of that, I also realized that it really um, closed me off a lot. I'm not a super open person, but when it comes to my friends, I've learned over time how to be more vulnerable with them and, and be open with them about the things that 
do hurt. I kid you guys not, almost all my close friends to this day will tell you that I am probably one of the most sensitive people ever. I used to look at that as a bad thing, but no, it's not. I used to really struggle with being 100% honest about how I felt about certain situations. And I think that's just because I was scared. I was gonna be looked at as weak. And being vulnerable was something that me and my therapist have been targeting at this given moment. And you know, I actually was anti-therapy for so long because I was like, why do I need someone to tell me how to navigate my way throughout life, but how to problem solve? Why do I need that? But then once I got my therapist, I was like, okay, you know what? Maybe this is what I need in this given point in time because I, although I am a strong woman, some things I just can't figure out on my own. And going back to the dating conversation, because I swear I kind of just like skipped to this, to that, but I swear it's all gonna correlate. So in therapy, I have been very vulnerable about just like, you know, my past relationships and friendships. We did come to an idea to um, let myself be alone in this point in my life. Um, let myself be free, let myself be alone. Um, and let me be forced to sit alone with myself and figure a lot of things out. If y'all been keeping up with me for quite some time, y'all know I've actually always been partnered to someone. Like I've always been, I'm a lover girl, but hold on, cause there are buts, there are restrictions there. But if you don't work through your past trauma, whether it comes from family, friends, and things of that sort, you're just not gonna be able to fully show up as the best version of yourself consistently in a relationship. And you know, I used to think that was so bad, so I would like try to cling on to them so that they like wouldn't be the one that got away, you know? But now that time has passed and I've been talking through a lot of things and just being very open and vulnerable with my therapist, I've just realized it's just what's best for me. I'm young, very young actually. And um, I think that I still have a lot of growing to do. I have a pretty solid and significant idea where I want to go career-wise. There are also some things that you should want to improve personally. I'm not emotionally available at the moment. Um, and I've actually been enjoying this time that I've been by myself. And not only that, but therapy too. I really enjoy therapy because it's helped me learn a lot in such so little time. I'm still learning. And this is a, a progression thing. You know, it doesn't just happen been overnight. Um, and I get that. I give myself a lot of grace because just being able to tell someone that you're a great person, but I am just not emotionally available to be committed to anything right now, that's hard. It's so hard. So being able to do that, I think that's just what really makes me very excited for what is for me in the future. I've been committed to a relationship or a talking stage or something almost every summer since I graduated high school which is like three years and that's crazy and I was talking with my therapist and we we're just like those are like your golden years of college where you should be going out you should be wearing what you want to wear you shouldn't be tied down to someone you shouldn't have to answer to this person or that person like you should be figuring out your I was like you know what you might be kind of right you might be onto something so been enjoying myself because i don't know if y'all be seen but i've been outside um i just live in life like i don't have any restrictions you know it's like i'm just having fun i didn't really have that much freedom um because i always had to consider the other person like if i wanted to wear this i had to consider okay well dang maybe this person might not like me going out like that and i'm not with them or like maybe i shouldn't be dancing on my homegirls while i'm at the club because it could be perceived a certain way because you know i like girls like it's you know so glad for my therapist um most importantly but i'm just so glad to have this realization early on in my life because the last thing I want to do is get to 25, 26, and never experience that, I guess, college experience or just the young life experience in general, like being able to up and travel when you wanna go. My therapist has helped me find a bit more self-awareness. Not being able to fully 
say that I'm not emotionally available to show up and be the best version of myself in this relationship, but I can be your friend. It's hard, but it takes such a relief off of my shoulders as I'm going through this journey because I know that I'm not leading someone on and selling hopes and dreams, knowing that I could possibly break their heart. I've had my heart broken. I've also broken hearts. So I can see it from both ends of the stick. And I just would always want someone to be transparent with me. You'll get so much further by just being honest. And even though me and my therapist have not talked about this, I have also been considering going celibate for a little bit. I'm at this weird point in my life where so I'm starting to realize that when I remove sex from the equation, sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes the person does not have substance. And of course, substance is, is different for everybody. Like what kind of substance you want out of someone, like the kind of things that you want to be able to just openly discuss with your partner is different for everybody. Just because I think someone lacks substance doesn't mean that the next person might not think that they lack substance, you know? In the past, I have gotten involved with people that are very service level. They don't really have much of a range when it comes to conversing. I love range because I know I have range. So when I'm seeking out someone or someone is seeking me, that's something that I need. And I'm just starting to realize that once I remove me getting my pleasure from them away, once I take it off the table, it's nothing really keeping me there. Doesn't my hair look so good? I'm like, I'm trying to figure out what is next. I know you guys do that. Like you just literally blank out all of a sudden when you're doing your makeup like what's next i'm definitely having one of those moments i am really curious to know if any of you guys are going through this weird phase right now i just i don't know like it's just look at that highlighter oh my god this is the wet and wild highlighter um i typically i use my fancy or either my um jacqueline hill is it jacqueline hill jack I don't know if it's Jacqueline Hill, but I know it's Jacqueline Cosmetics, so it might be Jacqueline Hill. But this one is more of a rosy. If I want to go for like a deep blush, this is definitely what I'll go for. This one's more of a bronzy shade. You guys know my Fenty is more of a holographic silver. Yeah, it's very... Oh, wait, hold on. That don't look blended on here. Am I tripping? You know, I just really would recommend therapy to anyone that feels like they need it. As someone who has had two therapists... The first therapist I had was a woman therapist. And you want to know what's crazy? I actually met her on BetterHelp because I had seen so many people promoting it and I thought it was going to be good. I didn't really like her as a therapist. She was a very sweet woman, very kind. Uh, she was such a sweetheart. And she's from the Midwest too. Um, but she just kind of told me everything that I wanted to hear. Because I know there were some situations where I can go back and be like, yeah, I was at fault and I shouldn't have did this. Instead of her calling me out and telling me the way you acted could have been a trauma response, she would tell me, yeah, well, everyone does that, though. Like, everyone does that at least once in their lifetime, so don't beat yourself up. You know, I want you to be able to call me out when something is wrong or if I do something that's wrong, if I should have handled something differently, whether it happens in public and you check me about it in private because, you know, if we're friends, you know, if you do something weird in public, I'm going to call you out about in private but either way i'm still going to address the situation and that's what i expect i expect the same thing vice versa all my friends hold me accountable so i don't want a therapist that's going to tell me everything that i want to hear because then i'm never going to grow as a person i had to get rid of her y'all she was so sweet though and i didn't want to get rid of her but i had to because i was like girl i'm not paying you to just tell me what i want to hear you know what i'm saying that's not what i'm paying you for in therapy and cheap by going on google and just basically searching up therapists near me and of course I read reviews because you know reviews are very important but you also have to remember um, it's good to get your own experience with someone because someone else's experience can be different for you you know just like some people they like better help I just didn't have a good experience you know it's nothing wrong with better help I think a lot of people have like free trials and stuff like that out there so if you like are interested in getting into therapy maybe you might find a really good therapist on better help I'm not saying no better help I'm just saying that it just didn't work for me so I had to go find a licensed therapist in my area now that is an eyelash I actually had a lash extension yesterday but girl, I didn't even take them things off.
They were irritating my eyes. And I hate that. Oh, you guys like my earrings? I didn't even realize that I was getting a close up on them. Are they cute? These earrings and necklaces are from Aoki the brand. Link to the Instagram will be in the description bar down below. Because they're so cute. Yes. Period.